Welcome to the very first in-person New Bedford Light Fine Arts Club. Woo! I'm Bobby Rossner, founding editor of The Light. Um, we are a nonprofit, nonpartisan, all digital, all free community news outlet. And today we are celebrating our first anniversary of existence. Ah! Uh, we, we launched the newbedfordlight.org in June of 2021. And so happy birthday to us and our community and to independent journalism in New Bedford. You, you are all invited to join us immediately after the, the Arts Club event um, for an open house and birthday cake in our Kilburn newsroom, which is right upstairs on the second floor. Come off the elevator, go left, left, and left. No political connotation there. Um, and uh, almost directly above us is, is where we're located. You can tour our newsroom and have some cake. And our doors will be open, uh, and our staff will be on hand from 5 to 6. So uh, I will also be uh, answering questions and taking criticism or suggestions um, for our news organization. And there's also some very cool swag, so you don't want to miss it. Um, I want to thank DOCO for giving us this wonderful space uh, this afternoon. Our New Bedford Light staffers are regulars here. And I have to confess, I'm totally hooked on the frittata. And the um, mimosas are pretty good, too. Don't tell my publisher. Um, so I'm going to turn things over to our fabulous host, Fitz Carmel Lamar, an extremely talented artist um, and teacher and art entrepreneur. Unfortunately, our co-host, Shelley uh, Cardus, had to cancel at the last minute. so. Fitz is going to fly solo. Um, he's quite adept at improvising, as you can see, so I'm sure he'll do just fine. Um, Fitz, it's all yours. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. All right, here's how it works. The artists have five minutes to present two pieces of their fine art and uh, kind of have a bit of a discussion over their process and all that other, whatever they decide to talk about. Things pop up, always always pretty cool. Uh, leave a little bit of time, artists, for a little Q&A from uh, you folks out there, just in case uh, you're interested in uh, a little bit more about that artist and so on and so forth. If you do have a question while they're up, uh, feel free to raise your hand. We got a microphone we'll send over to you, and uh, you can uh, get your questions answered firsthand. Uh, contact information will be available in these uh, uh, brochures or pamphlets or kind of thingies we're passing out here. So the order of the artists are also in here too, so keep that in mind so you can uh, get a little prepped as we uh, keep the flow going. Uh, and if you're interested in some art that you see, <clears throat> you can contact the artist directly. Uh, the thing that I like about being a part of this is there's no commissions either. So this is straight to the artist, kind of like farm to table kind of thing. Now we're going like art right to your living room. So uh, if you see something, yeah, absolutely. Um, so these lovely artists decided to come out here and join us, so let's see. After all of this, we have a little afterglow where we're gonna talk about some artsy stuff if you wanna know a little bit more about process. My name is it's Carmel Lamar. I'm a local artist here uh, in New Bedford. I do murals and portraits and all that kind of stuff, kids programs, uh, and a graphic novel as well. But let's get to the real people we're here for. John Jameson, step up, please. Let's see what you got. Let's see what you got. We're going to be looking at his two pieces, Cranberry Bogs and Tall Summer Clouds. Now what John doesn't know is I have a uh, certain affinity for clouds, um, right? Uh, I, growing up in Florida, I kinda, it's very flat out there, so the clouds are just different. Uh, and then I went out to California, and then so you notice, 
just where you are, the clouds are a little bit different. Uh, kind of like, you know, people everywhere you go to. So I was very intrigued and wanted to see these pieces up close and personal. Um, and uh, later on, I highly suggest folks, you know, take a look at it as well if you see them back there. Take it away. Oh, thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me. Um, God, you're talking about Florida. I could talk about like different clouds around different parts of the country. Like, uh, it's wild. But anyways, hi everyone. My name is John. Can everyone hear me all right or should I talk a little louder? Great. Um, so I wanted to present these two very summary pieces. I think they kind of complement each other very well. I primarily do two bodies of work, some things more figurative and with uh, portraiture and things like that. And I have another body of work that's inspired a lot by working outdoors and nature and the environment and things like that. So these are two, uh, two scenes that I wanted to present, both very uh, cloud focused with a very low horizon line with an emphasis sort of on the atmosphere, both atmosphere as a place that you can feel and relate to, but also atmosphere like layers of physical air and humidity, whatever you have, uh, that also translates into layers of the paint, which is really exciting to present these in person. Uh, I feel like whenever I show work uh, with just like photos, it doesn't quite get the, the tactile feel of uh, the paint that's very important to me. Um, another thing I find a uh, really interesting uh, development with uh, painting outdoors is I have a relationship with color that I find uh, really important with my work. What do I want to put Mike feature that? Um, so I like using uh, very vibrant, intense colors and having that carry out the sense of luminosity and light, which I find very exciting when you're outside. Um, so that's like my elevator pitch. I can go on a tangent about how it's uh, painted or field questions, or I can go on forever, really. So, so if, you, if you do have questions, uh, feel free to raise your hand, but I guess my question would be, so you kind of answered it to a degree, you paint these outside. No, well, I do, so I have studio painting and I have plein air outdoor painting okay. as well. Okay. And I find that the outside experience helps me um, it helps me focus and be more honest about things of composition and color. I find it really inspiring. So I, I paint outdoors. It's kind of a 50-50 split now. So you kind Both of work the, references yeah, as well. So, so they're from drawings and a series of photos and things like that. But I find that the thing that's really important to me is that the experience of being outdoors gets brought into the studio. Mm. And I find that that hands-on approach of working outdoors informs the practice of the studio paintings, if that makes sense. You know, uh, I kind of like to think that even if you're working from life or if you're working from a photo, uh, I like to think that all painting, abstract or representational, it all exists in the mind first and primarily, and that is an expression of the individual making it. You know? So, you know? How long have you been painting? Long time. Uh, right now I'm 33. I think I started maybe around like 15 or so. So, you know, it's weird to look back and be like, it's been half my life, but yeah, it's, you know. When did you start time. getting paid for those paintings? You know, it kind of, it slowly trickles in because like, a, you know, you got an aunt that has a picture that they want done. You're like, yeah, of course, you know, uh, trying to do it more seriously. Uh, Definitely, I took. I started accepting a lot more commissions around the start of the pandemic, and that I feel like helped the momentum to sort of shy away from day jobs more. Uh, but you know, maybe getting paid for like ten years or so, something like okay. that. But it comes and goes. But that Absolutely. entrepreneurial spirit from young was there. Uh, I, I feel like I've been paintings. I've been trying to learn that a lot more now, but it, it's been getting better. I find that, uh, you know, doing things like speaking in front of uh, crowds of people that I don't know, you know, it's something that I haven't done enough of and I'd like to do more. I hope I'm doing good right now. I don't know. Hey! You're doing great. You're doing great. I'm just grabbing an applause line. Is that a question? Are these both scenes? Yes, yes. They're both local. This is um, kind of between Mattapoisit and Marion with a little bit of cheating and borrowing from... Um, What's the, what's the town that you go through like on the way to like Mile Standish? There's a lot of cranberry bogs there. So, yeah. 
And um, yeah, Carver, that's right, thank you. Um, and the, the far one there, that's actually looking sort of due east from uh, Ned's Point in Mattapoisa. I was thinking about bringing a, a Ned's Point painting, but um, I sort of liked how these looked together. I like um, really just, the, I think they look well together. Different types of blue, I like a blue that goes towards violet and a blue that goes towards green and everything in between, lots of excitement there. I mean, you talk to a painter about their favorite colors and it's a very hard question, right, so right, right. yeah. So uh, <clears throat> folks got their smartphones and stuff, tell people how to get in contact with you. Oh, right, uh, so I have a website, johnjamesonpaintings.com. Uh, the thing I update more, just because it's easy to do, is the, uh, my Instagram, which is uh, at John Jameson Paintings. And uh, there you see a lot of, uh, a lot of the outdoor sketches, um, things like that, as well as completed paintings, which is nice. So I think that the work looks good when it's uh, viewed sort of as a set and you get the variety and diversity of times of day, times of year, all expressed through the colors and forms. I'm sorry, John. Could you say those the website tag again for Instagram? Yeah, at John Jameson Paintings. Yeah, that's it. Did I say dot com? No, 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 no. Okay. I want you to repeat it. Oh, okay. So yeah. I. Yeah. So Instagram <laughs> at John Jameson Paintings with an S because there's more than one. There's at least two. So yeah. Uh, right. On. Right. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. I don't know if that was. For... I think we did. Yeah. yeah oh. I have no idea. I just. I, I'd be. I'd be. I'd, you know, going first. I'd. I'd feel really bad if I took up like 20 minutes and then we we're rushing through the rest. And so, anyways, thanks for having me, everyone. Right See you around. Thanks so much. Right up, my dear. Let's get a round of applause for Mario. Oh yeah. So I, I have a little history here with, with Mary Ellen uh, from Gallery X. Uh, when I was a member there, she kind of stopped in and really intrigued me with a lot of the stuff she has because uh, I don't know how the hell she comes up with these ideas and, and puts stuff together. Um, we're breakfast buddies as well. We, uh, we, we hang out, so. Uh, yeah. yeah, now and again, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, take it away, tell us, tell us about what right. we got here. So I'm originally from Worcester, Mass. And as a little kid, I liked little things I could put in my pocket. Number one, you can't steal it from me. Number two, you're not gonna get it out of my pocket unless I give it to you. So I like weird, odd things. I like that weird broken earring that nobody else wants. I like, uh, you know, they use that for tea, I reckon. And sea glass that I've collected over my life. I trained my kids to pick up anything that looked like a heart. They did pretty well. Um, so I had all this stuff, right? And I always knew I was gonna make art with it, but it was, and I always have, but things evolve. Such as this piece originally started out with this, but it had a, like a, a dollhouse window kind of thing behind it as the platform, and it broke. That's the way of life, right? And then this was, I don't know, all different things over time. Uh, one time I had a black cat, cast iron cat hanging off of it. Um, this particular whale, just came back to me because somebody gave it to me. I gave it to them, they gave it back, I don't know. So yeah, so it needed that home right there. Now, I like taking things that I've collected and putting them together. So all of a sudden during the pandemic, I was on this whale thing. I don't, I don't know, I, I have issues. So I like all You're these the right little things. I like buttons, I like oddities. I collected those uh, fish teeth when I was in North Carolina. I've collected all kinds of things from Maine to Florida. And just putting them out together has been a blast. And not all the fish teeth are shark teeth because that's just not the way. And um, if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer. I, I collect all my things usually. People give me things. Um, I, I feel like I'm saving this stuff from the landfill. Like, like really, who wants
wants this busted piece? No one. Who, who wants this made smooth? Uh, or even this? Oh, Mark. Uh, ooh, 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 ooh. Oh. Quite sturdy. You got some sturdy art there, girl. So I found, I found over time that um, in order to make things stick really well, is either to use a really good glue, but not only that, sometimes you've got to use tacks or whatever you can find. And I also know that applying weight on top of this and letting it dry for 24 hours is really hard for me. Um, and, and then it sticks. So it's quite durable. Um, so I don't know why I made like, I think I'm up to 12 different kinds of whales, they're different colors, they're different things. Some have old buttons. Um, I met a woman who used to sew for her children. So she had this collection of antique buttons and gave them to me. You know how hard it was to pick all the thread out? Listen, they didn't mess around back then. When they sewed that on, that thing was not coming off. <laughs> oh, oh, good save. Good <laughs> Center. Um, so yeah, I had to pick them all out. Um, but I have fun doing it. My grandkids love to come over and pick at things. Grandma, what is this? Can I have that? What is that? I, I got rocks. I got stones. I told my daughter, when I end up in the home, bring me rocks, seashells, and I'll be happy all day, every day. They'll always look different. So um, I enjoy doing this immensely. And I decided this year I have to get this stuff off my walls. I live in housing for elderly. They're supposed to renovate. Everything has to come off the walls, okay? So it's gonna go cheap. Like, if you offer me a fair price, I'm down. Cash is king. So, uh, thank you. The prices are also in the brochures uh, and the contact information, but yep. is there any uh, website you'd like to plug? Or uh, any, uh, no, but you know, you know what I did today is I actually made some business cards, okay? So over the years, I probably made hundreds of business cards and never gave out maybe 10. So I decided to use some of my other artwork that I do and make business cards. And I also brought a portfolio book today, which I've been trying to work on, but I'm not tech savvy. Uh, I do all right, but taking pictures and whatever of different art that I create. Because this isn't all. Um, I like to do walking sticks and magic wands, and I love to draw. And I'm, I don't know, lately I've been on a kick embroidering. Like, why? I don't know. So, yeah, I like to do a very, various amounts of things. And um, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Right on. Thank you. So, how long would you have, personal question, I never asked you this, how long would you have considered yourself an artist? Okay, okay, I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> the first time I, get, I joined Gallery X, the first year I paid my dues and I actually made money. And I went, oh my God, somebody bought that. For that price, like I put it a high price because I don't know, I have no idea. Um, you know, and, and it made me feel good. Like, I, in my younger years, was a poet, a uh, slam poet, if you all know what that is. So, good. So, yeah, you know, I, um, I never showed my art until then. All right. I carried it around, but just didn't show it. So, yeah. Well, you are. Yeah, now you are. Thank you. Now you are. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, Lorraine Sweeney, come on down. Come on down. Next. All right. Lorraine's a local here in New Bedford. And. Come on, come around here. So, uh, Lorraine's gonna share a little bit about what we got here. I'm, I have questions about that one already, but go for it. Um, before I get into just conversation, um, I did spend some time, and um, I can find it. Um, there it is. Um, I'm a writer and a poet right now. I'm retired. I was a speech language pathologist, but art has always been my first love. Um, I considered it as an occupation, but I said, mm, I want a regular salary. Anyway, 
So I'm going to talk about what I wrote for these pictures, and then I can share some more. This one is called Connectivity. Oops. Yeah, that's easier. Thank you. Okay. I created this painting to represent the tactile experience of shells. I wanted to emphasize the pleasure of running my fingers across a shell. While I received most of my immediate sensory information through sight and hearing, texture provides a special interaction with a shell. I imagine being borne by the tide as it rolls across the surface of a shell, creating ripples that are shaped by the surface of the shell. These ripples, shaped by one shell, spread across multiple other surfaces, unifying everything touched by the tide. I also imagine the air moving across a shell, which also unifies everything over which it moves. Without these images, I'm sorry, with these images, I am connected to the natural world. This is benvenute, which means welcome in Italian. As I found, as I toured medieval walled cities in Italy, I was struck by the artistic creations on buildings especially the door mark, the door knockers. What an incredible variety of designs, from elephants with Asian adornments, queens, Satan, cats, and every sort of geometric shape. When I returned home, I learned the that the original door knockers were slaves in ancient Greece, chained to the front doors of wealthy homeowners. Using my photos and several from the internet, I painted a series of door knockers to celebrate the incredible visual feasts on the doors along the streets of Siena, Florence, Rome, and all of those tiny, unpronounceable cities that are surrounded by walls. I like this door knocker because it models the action that slaves once performed. One that we all perform today, where there is no door knocker to signal our request for admission. So my painting has always been of animals for the most part. I do birds, I do bluebirds, I do eagles, um, I do falcons, um, I've done several cardinals, um, orioles, I do a lot of birds. I also like, I have this thing for wild cats, tigers and mountain lions, so I've done several paintings of them. Most of my work is realistic, but I do have um, a lot of um, less realistic um, pieces. When I worked on my door knockers um, from Italy, um, I certainly used my imagination. I have one of a devil in black, and he's about this big. Um, the photo, of course, is this big, and on a door, it's only this big, but I made him big and black. I have queens. I have all sorts of geometric shapes. Um, Quick question, Laurie. Yes. Where can the people find your work? I can send them to you. Okay. 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 Um, I did complete 30 credits in painting and drawing at UMass after I retired. 
And I picked up some really good skills and painting techniques, but basically I'm a self-taught artist. Um, thank you. All right. Introduce yourself. Let, let folks know who you are. Thank you. Step right about here. I don't want you to bump into your... I don't want to bump into... Can everyone hear me? One step. Now can everyone hear me? Okay. I'm Jenny Crystal. There you go. Um, how do I begin? I am a recent... Um, we moved here from Vermont about two years ago, just in time for a pandemic. <laughs> um, and actually, this piece reflects that a little bit. Um, actually, both of them reflect that. I'm actually, by training, an expressive arts therapist using the arts to help people with emotional um, concerns, um, doing trauma-informed work. But I've been an art, making, art maker myself for most of my life in one way or the other. And I started printmaking, monoprint, monotype, and etching in 1993. Um, and have been studying printmaking as well as self-taught other things. And most recently in the last couple of years during, during our isolation, I've been learning how to take plants from my garden, primarily invasives, the ones I don't really want, and print making with them and making paper and boiling them to imprint. So some of this has that. So one of the things is because my orientation of a as a therapist is about working with the unconscious, my art reflects that and and so most of my art making is very spontaneous it could this piece actually was begun in 2020 and i finally finished it about three or four months ago that it takes time to evolve its process over product and so the the process evolves as i work with it as i work with the image i let the image speak to me so this piece over here, the um, Emerging Out of Chaos, was 2020, before a pandemic hit. Um, and I think, you know, over the last two years, I've been really working, what does it mean to be in this world? What does it mean to be in this universe? What does it mean to emerge? And what, what does actually chaos really mean? And I've been really playing with those thoughts from a political perspective and ecology ecological perspective, I'm not nervous, um, uh, and, and a humanity perspective. This piece, um, this piece here is a um, handbook. That was pulled on a press to, with a 200 pound weight. This is hand pulled, so there's a real difference in the quality of the pulling. Um, and the original of this, so one of the things about printmaking that I really love is that you can actually take a plate, you paint on the plate, or you use, and I often will use natural objects to stencil into a print, and you can take that plate after printing it once and print it again numerous times. And one of the things is I printed the original plate on parchment paper, handmade parchment paper, 
And what you can see in the tree is actually the essence of the parchment paper coming through that was handmade by someone. Um, here is some paper overlaid that, I, like I said, I've been working with botanicals and it's paper that I actually made using the botanicals from my garden, um, eco-printing. And then I added on it with watercolors and pastels. And again, the tree, again in my work, we use the tree as a reference to the self. And so who am I? What am I? Where am I standing in this world? What is, what is happening and how is myself being affected by that? And so we, I do a lot of work around trees and ecology and integrating that in conversations and stories. I think I'm done. Have any questions? Any questions, anyone? Well, my question is on emerging from the chaos. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know when that's done? <laughs> that's a question for any of them that I'm, I'm done. Um, I feel a rightness. It's right here. It's, it's an energetic, and I do energy work too, so that, there you go. Um, but there's an energetic sense of, I'm done. <laughs> um, with this one, I didn't need so much time. I began it about two months ago, and it was done within a couple of weeks. And I just knew. It, there was nothing else that it needed. It, it had its voice. And I, I think what I do is I'm looking for the voice of the print and the voice of the art to speak to me and tell me, hi, I'm done. <laughs> this is your story. This is my story. And when I, when I can read into the story, then I'm OK. Then I feel like I've got it. Time's up. Thank you. Uh, can you tell the people uh, where to reach you, your website? Uh, yes, I have a website. It's a little bit out of date. Uh, it's www.jencrystal.com. Um, and I do have another website, uh, www.journeyworksllc.com. So you can find me either way, and I've got cards, all that good stuff. Thank you very much. Let's Thank have a half hour. Candace Sherman. Step on up. Right on. Definitely a pleasure. Definitely a pleasure. Candace Sherman, and I'm sort of a replant person for the area. I moved here back in the early 70s, and I went to SMU, that is now UMass Dartmouth, and then I moved to Newport, Rhode Island. And from there, I lived and worked at my career of making fine, fine jewelry. And I've always painted and made jewelry since I was a child. And just before the pandemic hit, I decided to sell my home in Newport and move back into the area. And I'm still looking for my next home. <laughs> so it's been a long haul. But during this, I decided to get back into my painting work a little bit more seriously. And I did this to represent all of us during the pandemic where we're all looking to make connections so i felt that this was representative of how we are links in a chain and we're all sort of looking to find another link that we can identify with so that's the purpose behind this concept here and then this painting over here is of um, a sunrise over West Island. And it was a daily view for me for about two and a half months. And I just delighted every day getting up and looking out the window and seeing the sunrise over West Island. So 
I'm so happy to be back in the area, and I'm really happy to be part of this group. So, so how long does something like that one over there take? Well, I would say that the beginning stages are about a two-hour phase. I work with, um, now I work with uh, acrylics, and uh, when I was younger, I worked with watercolors, then I got into oils, and I did that for many, many years. And now I've been working with acrylics. And one of the things that I love about acrylics is it's easy to get into the jewel tones, which I identify with being a jeweler, but also the fact that they dry much more quickly. And so if you decide to change your mind on what you're painting, it's easy to cover it up. But on something like this, I would say that the basic element takes about two to three hours. And then after that, it's a lot of contemplation. You sit and you look, and then you get up and you start painting again, and then you sit and you look and you start painting again. So for me, doing something like this, I would say it takes at least two weeks. Okay. And is that reference, or you mentioned it was a regular view. Did you take mm -hmm. pictures of this view, or were you I, painting? Well, right I here? did take pictures, and I worked from the, the photos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Working on this view, or were you I, painting? Well, right I did take pictures, and I worked from the, the photos. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where can the people find your stuff? Oh, I do have a website that is completely out of date. <laughs> <laughs> but it is on the, the sheets. It's clsherman.com. Um, you can always email me. I'm at cls at clsherman.com. I'm trying to do a lot of different things right now. I'm going to be doing a show in Marion, Art on the Lawn, next month, so I'm trying to get ready for that. And then I'm also trying to do my website over again. And then I'm also trying to sign up to an online selling uh, uh, program that is kind of like Etsy, but different, a little bit different. It's called Ruby Lane. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire at the moment, but you can always contact me through my email and I will definitely respond. I know. Yes. Are most of your paintings like that? The landscape, the seascape, because in a million years I've never think the same artist in both of those. <laughs> no, I do kind of jump around. I I do like um, landscapes, and um, I do occasionally do uh, abstracts, but. I also do something that is a lot more sort of um, folk art painting style, and I didn't submit any of those, so I didn't bring any. That is the richest acrylic painting I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh, God. I, I thought it was so oil tall. myself. Oh, my God. Yeah. 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 Is that the regular? When you said jewel tones, is that a special kind of paint? Or? No, actually, I have used some gold paint mixed in. And um, so that you know, helps to wow. sort of raise the color to content. But I'll tell you to stick with that. <laughs> <laughs> that is so exciting. Okay. Well, right thank on. you. Thank you very much. I thank you. Uh, let's have a hand for Candy. Thank you. Yes. Thank yes. you very much. Fantastic. All right, Christine. You're up, my dear. Right on. Candace Sherman. Step on up. Right on. Definitely a pleasure. Definitely a pleasure. Let's have a hand for Christine. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Everybody's got a hand. 
practice it. Yeah, practice you're doing well. Oh. Oh, sorry. You're stepping up in there. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I'm Christine Mayato Fitzgerald, and a little bit about myself. Um, I have been interested in art since I was a little girl. I used to draw and get into um, little art shows at grammar school and things like that. And fast forward, um, I went to school for fine arts and I do have my own gallery, Me Art Fitz Art uh, Gallery and Studio. And as you can see, my mediums are both photography and painting. So this, photo this photograph here, um, yeah, thank you. This photograph here is uh, inspired by, to be honest, a really difficult time I was going through. And it's a part of a series called Retribution Refuse. And it's about maybe 20, 25 pieces that are with this collection. And this is a spin on the original piece, which is color. So this is a black and white um, interpretation of that piece, and it's called Deliverance. Uh, it is on a gleeshy print, it's matted and framed, and this piece I would say is about 30 to 40 inches. And here is my Travelers Rose um, piece here, as you can see it's abstract, and it's really layered with a lot of texture. I love, love, love texture. Um, so you really have to get up close and take a look at it because there's so many different layers. I think. I probably have about five different layers on here, um, which took a long time, but the layers dry, and it's a muted palette here. And um, I did this in 2021, and I was just thinking about different things of my art career and how I have a lot of Travelers Roads left. And so that's where the inspiration came from for that piece. And I believe this is about 24 to 36. It's a homemade canvas, so it's not exact measurements, but that's the general idea. That's pretty much it. How long does something like that take you to do? Oh, this one, it did take me a very long time. Um, I want to say probably about 20 hours. Okay. Yeah, okay. because I would leave it, let it dry, come back, and change things, put different colors on. Um, so, yeah. And just a little on the process, because I'm I'm sure there's more than just acrylic paint, yeah? It's like uh, there's a little gesso on there, okay. chunks of gesso. Okay, um, okay. Again, letting that dry so yeah. Right, to right. raise for the texture. Yeah, exactly. Right, because that's, yes. I had, I painted and I don't know how to get that texture, so I. I can show you. Okay. <laughs> yeah! That's, I like that. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So tell the folks where they can uh, pick up your um, work. So you can find me at mayautofitsart.com, my website. Um, I also have business cards if anyone is interested. And I'm on page three of the, the pamphlet that was handed out with all my information. Uh, but it is mayautofitsart.com. Right on. Good. All right. Yeah? That's it. All right. Okay. Let's have a hand for Christine. Thank you. <laughs> And her lovely husband. Look at those muscles holding all that artwork. <laughs> oh, that was good. Ooh, Caitlin Tripp. Caitlin, come on. Down. I actually own some Caitlin Tripp artwork myself. It's a stormtrooper. Uh, a friend of mine knew I was a big fan of... Uh, Maybe put one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is not good. This is precarious. Yeah, this is not good. How about this? 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 Yeah, this I mean, since high school, but I've been drawing and just creating art like since I was young. I think a lot of us artists have, are like that. We're just doing it our whole lives. Um, let me think. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, this year, I actually registered myself as a small business um, owner. So 
creating art. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> hoping to do it full time. Yeah, that's the dream, right? To to do that. So I'm I'm hoping to do that. So what's interesting about these paintings is that these are more earlier works, I guess you could say, because my newer pieces, if you do end up going on my website later, um, I have a lot of space themed art. Um, I started with like lollipops in space with an astronaut on top and then it expanded to having animals in space with like astronaut helmets and lollipop moons because I thought that lollipops kind of look like moons you know if you like take bits off of a lollipop it looks like craters so it's just kind of a fun thing that I've been doing um, I've been doing for a, a long time that particular theme um, my art I've been told is uh, very whimsical um, fun you know you can see I use a lot of bright colors um, sometimes I just use like the straight like color that comes out of the acrylic paint I mix it a little bit but um, I find that like the heavy body acrylics I use are like just so they're so vibrant that like you don't really need to mix it with anything else um, but we'll talk about the owl so again it's an earlier work I was actually obsessed with owls for a little bit <laughs> um, I had like owl knickknacks and just like everything owls I just wanted to paint owls um, it's funny because my newer works I don't even have any birds really but this is my owl I call him sad owl because um, he's got a little tear uh, if you end up looking close enough but that was an accidental tear because I put too much water in the paint <laughs> so that's really interesting so the title it was an accidental accidental title there and he's got a bowler hat and a king because it's just fun uh, it, I was inspired by like Charlie Chaplin a little bit um, but it also came from an owl series just like having owls um, having things that are not norm that they don't normally have I had another owl that was supposed to be mr. owl you know mr. owl you know the Tootsie Pop commercial so he has so he has a lollipop so that one that one that one and then I had this one so they were they kind of went together like the colors were very similar um, so that but that's that one um, it's an 18 by 24 framed wire wire hanging on the back and then the next one is a flamingo as you can see another bird uh, again it's another earlier work It's a couple couple years old from 2019 I believe and my inspiration uh, was actually I did a market and I, this was my first time even painting a flamingo someone requested that I paint a flamingo uh, or just hey why don't you paint a flamingo and so I did and I was so inspired like I didn't even take a break I just painted it it took me three hours like in total but I was a straight it was a straight three hours <laughs> I was just painting and I was just so excited about um, you know doing it in the colors and I was proud of myself because usually I like to um, I don't know if you other artists do this but sometimes with like paint markers I'll like go back and like kind of fix my mistakes a little bit but this one it was just straight paintbrush <laughs> um, and yeah so I, I really enjoyed these two pieces and presenting them to you guys I feel like they're really um, fun and good for the summer they're very summery paintings and that's about it so where can the people find some of your work? So I have uh, Facebook and Instagram. They're both Art by Caitlin 730 but I also have a website, artbycaitlin.com, and you can purchase from me through through the website. Actually, if you go to both of those um, social media platforms, they bring you right to my website. I offer shipping. I offer local delivery um, as well. Uh, if you're pretty local to me, I can do that for you. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And also, I know you're going to be at Reggae on West Beach as a vendor. No? No? I couldn't. Oh, you were last year. I was last That's year. That's right. I'm Are you going to be anywhere else? I'm going to be, okay, so I'm going to have a, definitely a busy summer. I yeah, mean. Because I know you do a lot of vending. I've been doing a lot of markets as of this year, just like hustling. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to be at the Narragansett Brewery in Providence. Um, let me think of the date. It's in it's in June. I, it will be presented on my website. I, I keep it fairly updated. Um, so you'll see that on my website from an accident. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Well, that's, uh, if you, you want to get the latest news, uh, yeah, because this is the end of our show. Happy people. Yeah, it is. Um, but if you want any more, we did have one more? Yes, we have two more. Oh, we did? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, Mary Montero. I'm so sorry. I lost my other paper. Yeah, you're right. I'm so sorry. Michael's first.
Michael Rogowski, I apologize everyone. We are not done. Okay. <laughs> the show is still here. I lost my original papers. <laughs> they were over there. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that was huge. Probably have to hold this up. Oh, oh, I should put on a chair. You want to put it on the chair and then. Sorry about that, Michael. Oh, that's okay. You're gonna get over here. And uh, my name is Michael Rodovsky. I'm the grandson of coal miners from Pennsylvania. They they came from Russia, couldn't read or write. But I got a master's degree from the University of Maryland and a BA degree from the University of Maryland because my mother really pushed education because her father really pushed an English major, and I was so enthralled with it. She made me take a drawing a drawing class. So. I equate the year of being 18 years old as my start, even though I was always doing painting and drawings as a kid. So when I reached 37, I was so excited because I was alive longer for one year than the 18 years before I did artwork. So I was 19 years as an artist. And I had friends who were bemoaning that they were 30 years old. And I couldn't wait to be 37. So I'm now 72, and I've been painting my whole life. I've been very lucky to live in Provincetown for 40 years and work summers and paint all winter. Now I'm in New Bedford full time. This is Paints Creek in Brewster. And initially this was a commission piece. I did three of these paintings. The man's wife did not like them. So when she came to the studio, but on my computer was a rotation of my paintings and she happened to see one. And I have so many paintings in my basement that they bought two of those. Then I took this and totally redid it. And it's, it's a, I love the water. I'm enthralled with the water. To me, it's liquid light. And this is, some people think it's a, it can be winter or it could be summer. And this one. This is totally different. But yeah, there you go. Wow, that's a lot of blue. <laughs> well, it's a, it's called nocturnal, nocturnal sea. Uh, because I lived in Provincetown, I used to go to the beach all the time, and this is a night scene, and I didn't want to have it just blacks. So I chose dark, dark blues and give a nice flow, and I wanted something that was meditative, because some of my work is very, very dramatic, with the seascapes and the sun and the light, and this I wanted to be something calmer. So. You know, being artists, we can do whatever we want. We have total freedom, and we have nothing to lose. You can do anything from that to this to flamingos, and it, it's our passion, it's total freedom. So, my information is on the uh, pamphlet there. I, I just live three blocks past, um, four blocks past Hazelwood Park, so I could almost walk here. So my dream has come true. I've lived by the water my whole life, and I've been able to be successful. So that, that, that's it. I want to thank you for creating this for, for the artists. Well, that's New Bedford Life. New Bedford Life. All right, and Mary Montero, can you start working your way up here, my dear? Thank you so much. I get this not true, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mayor, if you want to start talking, you can. I'll set this up.
I am Mary Montero, and I'm short. <laughs> so, welcome to the club. <laughs> so, um, I have been painting all my life, uh, mostly as an illustrator uh, from my career. Now that I'm semi-retired, I just get to do fine art, which is I really love. Uh, I'm going to tell you about this guy here, the, uh, the whaleman statue. In your catalog, it says wheelman. <laughs> So I thought he's a yeah he's driving the getaway car <laughs> major crime, <laughs> but no this is the the whaleman statue in downtown New Bedford. Um, it symbolizes um, well on the description it says a dead whale or a stove boat. Um, as a pacifist, I prefer to think of it as failure is not an option. <laughs> And that's, that's really what it conveys. Um, I kind of fudge the perspective a little so that I, you can see the, uh, the, the city hall in the mm -hmm. background. Um, and it's done with oil washes, uh, which is looks kind of like watercolor, but it is oil. Uh, and um, I have uh, a prints made um, by Riverside Art. They have the most amazing scanner there. Uh, it's called the Crew Scanner. And the only one in New England, and it uh, does the it, the prints look just like the originals. Uh, they're done with uh, archival papers and archival inks. So these are doing a limited edition of 75. Um, they will be at the uh, New Bedford Folk Festival. I have a booth there. I don't have my booth number yet, but I will post that on my website. <laughs> so an interesting story about the statue. <clears throat> The, uh, when it was unveiled in 1913, there were three original whalemen who were in the crowd. And they criticized the statue for a couple of reasons. One of them, they said there was no way that a whaleman would be out there without a shirt. <laughs> right? That was artistic license. They also criticized the way he was holding the harpoon, that it wasn't accurate. Um, and then later I found out that the, the man was betrayed as a white man, which was really unusual, that usually the, the, the whale, the harpooner was usually a black man. So they go prejudice all over again. <laughs> but um, it's really, it's an impressive statue, um, and I just feel like it symbolizes the, the spirit of New Bedford, um, resilience. Uh, <laughs> And then my little guy here is my uh, painting of a Tropicana rose. Um, it was uh, my father's favorite rose. Uh, he was not a man who expressed his emotions out, outright with speech. But whenever this rose bloomed, he would always cut the perfect one and give it to my mom. So I, I've always, I think of him when I, when I see that, that rose. But, it's a beautiful rose. It's uh, very fragrant um, and has all kinds of shades in there if you look really closely. This is an oil on canvas. Um, don't ask me how long it took me to do it because <laughs> I usually, if I think something's finished, I put it away and then like a month later I'll look at it and I'll see, oh, you know, little touches there and here and there. But uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's me. Right so, yeah. are there any questions by any chance? So, my question for you on the oh, I just want to like I just want to let you know that's really amazing. And how was you able to like you know draw things on top of everything to have it come out with such a colorful blend all together? Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. Oh, which one are you trying oh, to? Right oh, the whaleman. Yeah. Okay. Um, I uh, worked as an illustrator for most of my career, so I was in the habit of copying photos. But with this one, I, like I said, I fudged the um, perspective a little to get the city hall in there. First it's drawn, um, and then the, uh, the oils are watered down with her, and then I just do layers and like, kind of like let it run along the bottom. Um, yeah, just, uh, it's a lot of fun. Thank you. <laughs> so if you go to the... Uh... <laughs>
So if you go to the, um, the Folk Festival, I will be there. I will put my booth number on my website and my Facebook. I was just wondering what you're using to create your washes with. I've, oh. I've always used oils pretty much, you know, straightforward. So I'm just wondering what you're doing this with. Uh, plain old turpentine. I use the, the non-odor one. Just thin it down with turp. And um, you can get it as thick or as thin as you like. And it dries fast because the turpentine evaporates. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mary. Let's uh, give a round of applause to Mary. Thank you very much. So, uh, one more round of applause for our uh, artists that showed up. It's uh, not that easy getting up here. Uh, I myself, uh, we're close to the end of the, at least the artist presentation. We're gonna kind of open it up for the uh, afterglow. I'd like to start off by thanking Bobby and the New Bedford Light for uh, the event. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Julian Badoko for uh, having us uh, hosting this space here as well. And I'd like to thank this lovely audience for uh, showing up. You guys uh, support the local art. It's huge, and just showing up is usually the thing that artists uh, appreciate the most. Uh, so thank you very much, Jackie. It was definitely good to see you here tomorrow. Um, as far as live discussion uh, on art C things, let's see. Um, does anybody, before I, because I, I can go on myself, uh, does anybody have any of the questions for any of the artists themselves, or is there another artist that I know you would like to talk to more, my friend, possibly, uh, about you know uh, your process and what you do? Because I think I did cut you a little short. No, not you. I think I cut you a little short, so I was sure you wanted to talk a little more. I didn't know. I was worried that I was taking too long. I had no idea what time I started. I'm wearing a watch that doesn't mean I know what time I I rambled on, too. I, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I think I forgot it, right? Yeah. I saw it. And if you also know any artists who would like to be showcased, uh, you can hop on the New Bedford Light uh, website as well, bedfordlight.org, and uh, you, you'll be able to find out uh, how to get some of your favorite artists up here as well. Oh, any art being shown anywhere or any local art shows? I know we have uh, a few... Uh, Festivals possibly coming up. I wasn't sure if anybody wanted to jump in. Oh, Gallery X. When is that? Next month at Gallery X. What's it Open July 2nd, Gallery X. Right on. Oh, no. Anytime. Anytime. No problem. Yes. I have some pieces at Gallery X right now to the Kaleidoscope program. So I have some pieces down there. That is right. That is right. Come on. Yes. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So I myself got my start at Gallery X. So uh, I like seeing the representation uh, here because that was definitely a great uh, grassroots kind of thing. You learn how to hang a show. You learn how to mix and mingle with folks. Yeah, yeah it's quite a joy. They had, it was one of the things I looked forward to. Uh, and it's how I got my start myself. Just to give a little background, when I first came, I moved to South Dartmouth, uh, and with nothing, like 500 bucks from California, that was it. And, but I wanted to be an artist, so I figured I'd get plugged into the community. I did my research out in Cali, and found out about Gallery X, and Tracy Barbosa, and I got to meet her too, and there were a couple of other artists, but by the time I got out here, uh, started doing Michael's art classes and stuff, uh, just to make a little something. But Gallery X is where, because I got my free art kit when you're doing the art classes with Michael. Uh, I found it on Craigslist. This is how bad that was. 
Uh, so then it was easy uh, just networking uh, in the community and learning so many different people and styles and how with hanging the art uh, and then selling it and schmoozing. Now, honestly, I will, I will be real. I've never really sold any art there, but I was able to parlay my networking into art classes uh, and into uh, an enrichment program. So the, the community here is definitely cohesive enough to me for any artist to be able to thrive. You just have to figure out those different avenues. I myself am a full-time artist, but it's not, I'm not just a painter. That would bore me to death. Not, not, don't, painters don't get upset with that. <laughs> but I have to do the kids' programs, the graphic novels, the, the other things to keep my brain going. Otherwise, if I get bored, then I'm losing the joy kind of portion of it. Which, I, that's why we do it. Like, you know, I, I want to do it for the money, but I could have been doing anything else and earning way more money than I make now, I'll be real. But I love what I do. And I know I represent a lot of the artists who are working full time or working towards being full time, or just for the hell of it. Um, there's that love that you do it for. Like, I feel like the artists that are here and some of the other, anybody here who even considers themselves an artist were like the kids who survive. Uh, because adulthood is like, kills that little <laughs> spirit you got in there. But being artists, we're able to, you know, Caitlin, Caitlin, can you hold, Caitlin, Caitlin Tripp, can you hold up, can you hold up the flamingo, please? Hold up the flamingo? Yes, please. No, the flamingo painting. I'll hold it up. Yes, please. <laughs> that, to me, is like, that's childhood, like, incarnate on canvas. Like, you can't, she gets to be a professional adult getting paid, like, doing art. Like, I, when I was a kid, I never thought that was, like, a thing. Even, like, my, my mom, well, my mom believed in me. My dad, even three, even a few years ago, I thought of telling somebody I was an engineer. <laughs> because he has such a hard time believing in childhood possibilities. So, I love what you do, by the way. That's why I was throwing that out there. I've known Caitlin for some years, and I've seen her hustling, like, hard out in these streets. Everywhere I would go, Caitlin would be there uh, with different festivals. That's how we know each other, it was just from rubbing elbows in this community. Christine. I was, yes. Oh! Okay. All right. We have two or three sales in the back today, so that's that round of applause for that. And I know Christine, you, I heard uh, something from the grapevine. You sold something on one of the last ones, so uh, the, this platform is working. Is is and this is what our fourth, third. See, it's only our third one. And first one in person. Yes. So, we already got some sales going, so I'm glad to see you back, because I also was right to you. Oh. I mean, they're nice. I knew. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. There's a, there's a, well, I'll get to it. So, I showed at your gallery which was an awesome experience. Uh, she reached out, I kind of do my thing, and I was able to showcase kind of whatever I want to there. So I appreciate that opportunity. Um, uh, so that, I, I would definitely say, being an artist in this community, um, if you need anything, let me know. You know, I'll, I, can, I know a lot of people, so that's because like with the grassroots effort to Gallery X, I just learned how to Keep the hustle going. I've worked with the New Bedford Art Museum, the Whaling Museum, the Bedford Whaling National Historical Park, uh, the Boys and Girls Club, Medicine Memorial, Andre McCoy, several, several entities. So along the lines, I've been able to develop these relationships with a bunch of folks. So it's been an awesome ride thus far. Uh, so I'd like to thank you. Again, everybody for showing up, I guess, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Upstairs.
Oh, we're gonna have some cake upstairs. Birthday cake. Yep. Birthday cake for New Bedford Lights. One year yep, anniversary. One. Yay! <laughs> well, thank you. Happy birthday. Oh, let's do it. Well, we can do it twice. I don't know if they're going oh, up there. You want to sing happy birthday yeah. right now? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay. All three. I mean, one. Mark is setting up your singers, too. But yeah. kind of. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Happy birthday.